tinted out. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. I'm not sure who this guy is. <laughs> this is Sandy Levin. I'm told. You're using this. Not car. Yeah. 
just got off the phone with a reporter and he said, well, what do you say about the fact that Paul Ryan just said that this is all a dog and pony show? I said, We're not going do away. you think that the lives of 49 people yeah. and 53 yeah. wounded, that that's a dog and pony show? Yeah. 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 We'll let the dogs out. Millions <laughs> of Americans that that's a pony, dog and pony show. Yeah. We have the worst situation possible with massacre after massacre and nothing being done by this Congress. And that's got to end. Yeah. not really just one, it's just one. Each one of the 49 people who lost their lives is special to, to somebody, their family, their loved ones. Mm -hmm. Individuals are being shot down. Yes. Yes. And the numbers, the big numbers can blur you. You know, 14 in, in San Bernardino, nine in, Char in, uh, in Charleston, 49 <laughs> here, 27 in Sandy Hook. You know, when I, this issue, when it hits me, I think of a 59-year-old of a woman in Minneapolis, my town, who was driving down the street, and she and some guys were shooting, and she got shot in the head and killed. This, this is what I think of. I mean, every day across our country, we have these mass shootings, but we also have these one at a time killing 62 individuals yes. were shot down yes. enough it wasn't just one shooter there was maybe 62 shooters but to every one of those people who was lost they were somebody incredibly precious Absolutely. to somebody else yes. and, and you know the, the hole never gets filled mm -hmm. never. you know they, they have the funeral and and then, you know, you go home to the bedroom that they used to occupy, mm -hmm. to the table they used to sit at, and it, and it never really heals. And the fact that we cannot get a vote to try to stop that from happening. Shameful. Yeah. Yeah. All we're asking is a simple vote. If you feel that you are a gun fundamentalist and you think having a gun and being able to shoot that gun and, and, and is more important than anything else, then you say you vote like yeah. that on yes. the house. Yeah. 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 You stand yeah. up and you be and you be the elected yeah. official that you were sent here to be. Yeah. Yeah. But don't hide behind yeah. no vote whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Don't hide behind no yeah. vote. Yeah. Give us a vote. And do your job. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to tell you guys 
that you are energizing and you are inspiring members of Congress to stay and on your that mom. They tell us that around eight, you know, the Republicans are going to try to retake the floor. I don't think so. No. So I'm going to go back there, but you keep on cheering, 200. you keep on rallying, because there is a family who is hurting. Maybe some of you all right here, right now. Yeah. Am I right about that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Maybe everybody here has a reason why they're here. Absolutely. Yes. And, and, and you are standing for that loved one, and you are standing for the people they left behind. And we are going to win this. We stick and we stay. Now, you guys ready to fight? Yeah! talking about us. Uh, and not only are they talking about us, but they're, they're actually, you know, they're sort of talking about us in a representative democracy way. Like, this is a this is a movement. The people out there are, are here for us. It's giving them strength. So it's awesome. Thank you so much for being here. We've sort of refreshed the crowd a little bit, and there's a ton of new people here, so thank you so much for coming. Um, my name's Isaac, I'm with Moms Demand Action. There's a few things that you can do, and I'm sorry if you've been here and heard me say this a million times. A uh, couple things that you can do so that we can get more people here. Number one, tell your network, tell everybody you know to come down here, because we're going to be there until they vote. So, you know, we've got food, we've got water, we've got more food coming. You know, we'll have speakers throughout the night. The representatives are going to keep coming and talking to us. We'll sing songs, I guess. Can you sleep here or is that illegal? <laughs> we can be on this side of the, thank you. We can be on this side of the fence. If you're on that side of the fence, the police may come and talk to us at some point, but what fence are you talking about? This, this fence, this concrete above me. Yeah. Fortunately, as members keep coming out, that is saving us, but uh, we may need to may need to get on this side. Take down that wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, a couple, a couple other things real quickly about social media. So, to, so this is very old school, which is awesome, uh, but we need to keep using social media to keep bringing more people in. So on Twitter, we want to keep using the hashtag uh, no bill, no break. There's a reason people keep saying that. Um, and at Moms Demand, that's super helpful. Uh, and then folks can text Demand Action to 64433. So you can text Demand Action to 64433. What does that accomplish? That will do one of two things. Uh, well, you can tell your friends to do it, uh, and that will give them the directions to come here. Uh, and also, if you're outside DC, uh, it'll help drive phone calls uh, into uh, the representative's office. So, yeah. folks may not have heard this. I told folks earlier, in three hours, we drove 55,000 phone calls into the House. Oh, yeah. And that's been happening since Orlando. So, that was just the last three hours since this started happening. Folks may recall there was an Orlando shooting. You may recall. Yeah. Two weeks ago, which was horrific. There have been hundreds of thousands of phone calls since then. Representatives' office, literally, they can't answer the phone fast enough. This is the biggest issue on the House or the Senate floor right now. And they don't care. And they still haven't done anything about it, so we're still here, and we're going to make them do something. So, If you missed it, again, it's text demand action to 64433. Again, demand action to 64433. We've got that. Feels good. All right. Cool. Um, 
One of the other things that's been really cool is that we've had some kids up here leading chants for the entire day. Awesome! Right. Not the NRA! Listen to the people! Not the NRA! Listen to the people! Not the NRA! Listen to the people! Not the NRA! Not the NRA. is that we're asking folks from the crowd to come up and actually read stories of folks who have lost their lives to gun violence. Um, and I w was wondering if there would be anybody in the crowd who would be willing to come up and read. Florida now is here. We'll read for Orlando. Yeah, awesome. yeah I'll read. Hi, everybody. Hi. My name's Laura Pasone. I'm the vice president of Florida now. National Organization for Women, but I have a personal reason for being here. Any death by a gun is a tragedy. I lost my husband to a bullet. Every time I hear of one of these things, it brings me back to May 1st, 2011, when uh, my husband died from a gunshot. We have to do something to stop this. We have to do something. None of these people in there have suffered like other people have suffered. They are the elite. They are the uh, people that just really don't care. They are the NRA whores. They're owned by the NRA. Yeah. Yeah. This needs to stop and this needs yeah. to stop now. I support every one of these Democratic uh, Congress people that sat down this morning on uh, today on the, on the House floor. I think they are the most wonderful heroes we could possibly have. Yeah. Yeah. Something now? What's that? Each year on April 16th, I will remember the fear, confusion, and anger. I'll smile remembering the support of friends, family, the entire country. The emotional highs and lows will feel fresh, just as in 2007 when I was a senior at Virginia Tech. I'll breathe a sigh of relief at the end of the day and thank God for the many blessings in my life. But today felt different from years past and I struggled to figure out why. Perhaps it was yesterday's bombings at the Boston Marathon that claimed three lives, including an eight-year-old boy and injured over 150 others. Perhaps it was the news that the first real compromise addressing our ineffective approach to gun policy may not have enough support to pass in the Senate. Perhaps it's the division and partisanship that grips Washington in total deadlock and has crowded out the voice of anyone who isn't strictly left or right. Then it dawned on me. What made April 16th so memorable was not the loss of life, but the strength, courage, and determination of the Virginia Tech community. The hope born from tragedy is what we choose to remember each year. But today, I didn't feel help hopeful. I felt let down, disappointed, and frustrated. I refuse to believe that we can't do better. We are a people born from the revolutionaries of the 18th century, the survivors of a civil war that pitted brother against brother, the, the visionaries of the civil rights movement. But today, we are failing miserably. Our children aren't safe in their schools. Our politicians won't work together because they're too busy cozying up to the special interests bankrolling their next campaign. And we, as a people, can't even have a civil debate about the issues tearing us apart at the seams without resorting to cheap name-calling and irrational fear-mongering. 
Many historians have noted that our nation has, been so, have, has never been so divided as it is today since the Civil War. That dark period of our history prompted President Lincoln to remark, the mystic cords of memory stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to every living heart and hearthstone all over this broad land will yet swell the chorus of the Union when again touched, as surely they will be, by the better angels of our nature. When I realized that I had less hope for our nation today than six years ago, when 32 of my classmates and teachers were senselessly slaughtered, I am forced to ask, where are the better angels of our nature? Are we so divided that we can't come together on anything in order to make our nation a more perfect union? I simply cannot accept that, and neither should you. I'm tired of feeling hopeless, as though we've all given up, especially our lawmakers. Our differences may be great, but that is no excuse to simply not try. We have a saying at Virginia Tech, live for 32. Today and from now on, I will be trying to figure out how I personally can affect change, force our lawmakers to quit running from every hard fight, and to help all of us have a better, more informed and civil dialogue about our differences. That is how I plan to live for 32 and the children of Newtown and the people of Boston and every other victim of senseless violence and injustice. I implore each of you to do the same, to listen to the better angels of your nature. Well done. Thank you. Uh, that was... Uh, that was written by Jamie Haynes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hey. Can we get another reader? Awesome. Now, also, if people have personal stories that they feel like they want to tell about why they're compelled to be here, I also think that would be really appropriate, too. <laughs> it's a little harder to think about, right? Uh, okay. Starting. Definitely a doctor with a Captain America shirt on. Pediatricians, no! Woo! Yes! Woo! Thanks, guys. Thanks for the first My name is Sanjeev Sriram. I'm a pediatrician here in Washington, D.C. I'm a member of Doctors for America, and we're with you guys. things that we're asking Congress to fight for is to end the ban on CDC gun research. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Woo. When, when we have 90 of our fellow Americans dying every day of gun violence, uh, I mean, you know, doctors need to know what is it that we can do to help our patients because, you know, there are so many guns in so many homes, so many people with so many different kinds of risk factors, whether it's you know, mental illness, where it's like, you know, you're, I mean, like depression, or whether you have a curious child at home, or whether you're a woman in an abusive relationship, you know, doctors want to know whether there's things that are going on at home, like guns, that are going to undermine that, that life, that safety. So the CDC gun research, you know, will help us with that additional knowledge, and we encourage you guys to add that into our you know, into our, our efforts for gun safety. And I want to I want to share um, this story from um, it is from Lori Haas. Okay, from Lori Haas, mother of Virginia Tech shooting victim. We hold the moral authority, and our elected leaders need to listen to us. Virginia, and then it says that Virginia mother of three, Lori Haas, is a mom on a mission. Her daughter, Emily, was shot twice in the head, but survived the mass shooting at Virginia Tech. Haas will not rest until hearts and laws have changed. The phone call. It was April 16, 2007. Emily Haas was in French class in Norris Hall. A gunman had chained the doors of the building and had begun killing students and professors. Gunman Shuang Hui Cho burst into Emily's class armed with two semi-automatic weapons. When police arrived in her classroom, they found Cho dead on the floor along with 11 innocent people he had killed. They began to rescue the wounded, including Emily. 
When Emily was taken to a triage center, she called her mom. I was out shopping with my minister, Haas recalled. My phone was ringing off the hook. It was Emily and she said, I've been shot. Emily told her mom someone had opened fire in her classroom. My heart sank. I drove to Blacksburg going 90 miles per hour, listening to the radio and just sobbing. The emergency vehicles were passing us. It was the most horrifying moment of my life, driving to get her and knowing she was injured, Haas said. In Haas's panic, she knew she was lucky to still hear her daughter's voice. There were 32 other families like me, but they were going to pick up their dead children. Moving forward. Two bullets had grazed Emily's skull. While bleeding in the classroom, she Gosh. on the line. Her emergency call was credited Fuck. with guiding first responders to the current location in the building. She gunman in order to get help to the right place. Her calm heroics while under fire have earned her praise from many people, including her mom. Emily was so brave that day. It's hard to imagine what all the survivors must relive occasionally. Emily was able to return to Virginia Tech and earn her degree. She is now a teacher and is married. While she does not often speak publicly about her experience in one of the worst mass shootings in history, her mom is front and center in the gun policy debate. Haas is the Virginia organizer for the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. She has also worked with the Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence, the Virginia Center for Public Safety, Protest Easy Guns, and Mayors Against Illegal Guns. You can find her sharing her family's story on YouTube, and she has made countless media and conference appearances. She has no intention of stopping, and neither do we. Yeah. <laughs> Newtown just brought home to me that we need to do more work and better work, Haas asserts. Haas has many emotions that drive her. One of them is anger. My anger is directed at elected leaders. I find it appalling that we have allowed the gun lobby to lead the debate on public safety. I look to law enforcement to guide the discussion on public safety. We'd like law enforcement officials to be the lead spokesman on the debate, not a gun lobby that is out to make money, Haas said. Haas believes the Sandy Hook tragedy will be a turning point due to the tender age of the victims. I can't fathom six and seven year old children being killed. I just can't fathom it. I'm sickened and horrified at the level of carnage in this country. 34 Americans are shot by guns every day. That's a Virginia Tech every day. Haas has plans to meet with lawmakers to make the case for strengthened gun laws. Haas's voice carries a lot of weight concerning how close, to, how close to losing her daughter she came. She hopes to leave an impression on lawmakers and others by sharing her emotions and some persuasive statistics. We've, made mass tragedy we've had mass tragedy after mass tragedy. Total gun deaths since the Virginia Tech tragedy are over 187,000. That's sickening in just six years. But I think there is a segment of the population that is listening. Three out of four NRA members wants background checks for all gun sales. 82% of gun owners want better and more responsible gun laws. We hold the moral authority and our elected leaders need to listen to us. The story came from Nicole Cunningham. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Best doctor ever. <laughs> ever. Do your job. 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 My father was NAACP president of the Illinois branch for over 20 years, served on the executive board. My father marched with, with Martin Luther King. I remember as a child going to marches, sitting in the back seat of the car with our co color coloring books and crayons and potato chips. I remember what my mom and my dad were doing and I didn't have any idea that I was making history. I was a part of history. 
It is my honor at this time to introduce to you Mr. Hillary Shelton, who is the Executive Director of the Washington Bureau of the NAACP. Thank you so much. I cannot begin to tell you how honored I am to be here among you. Those who have had the courage to stand up against those who would spend lots of money to make lots of money while taking human life. We know how this program works. We know why it is there's no good common sense in the approach that we're seeing around guns. We know that when we have problems in our society, then indeed we want to solve those problems, but you don't also let those who don't know have access to something that can take life the way guns do. We know that as those who live here, many of us have driver's license. We know that the, one of the number one causes that used to be the number one cause of death in our country was simply auto accidents. The utility versus the, the, the futility argument. The utility of being able to get people around, do a job, deliver things and so forth, and the futility oftentimes resulting in car accidents and people being injured and people dying. You cannot say that about guns in America. When we think about guns and the need to simply have some control over them, some good common sense way of actually challenging those who want to get them and put other people to death, we know there's a big mistake. There's a mistake when we look at what happened last year. Last Thanksgiving, I went to visit my parents in Missouri. I grew up in St. Louis, you know. And as I went to see my parents there, we sat and had great turkey dinner on Thursday and then watched what happened on Black Friday. Black Friday was the day that everybody went shopping to get those Christmas presents and plan for the holiday season. It was an awful shame that on Black Friday, 185,000 Americans got their permits to get their Christmas presents, guns for somebody else in America. It's a shame that as we see what happens, whether it's children dying in Connecticut, or moviegoers dying in Colorado, or whether it's even people being shot on the streets of Chicago, that for some reason, as to looking at these incidents, whether it's a mass murder that happens on one day or the mass murder that happens in 60 days. Indeed, we know that thousands upon thousands of American men, women, and our children find themselves literally at the barrel of a gun and the person with their finger on the trigger not being clear whether they should pull that trigger or not, and too often they do. So let me just say that when I look at the numbers, and we should always start with the numbers. I'm kind of a, a political geek. Somebody have to hold on. <laughs> you know what? If I step down one, will you all be okay? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, let me go down right here. We still good? Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm a numbers geek. You know, kind of a, a political wonk, so to speak. We always believe that in order to manage a problem, you must first measure it. To manage a problem, you must first measure it. So when we look at the measurement of what's happening to the women, the children, and the men in America, we have a problem. But for some reason, we're going in the wrong direction. So I've been working around issues of addressing gun control since my hair was black. <laughs> and I remember that when an incident like Colorado would happen, an incident like what happened with your son would occur, an, inc an incident like what happened just now, in, in Orlando, Florida. When those incidents would happen, Americans would organize together. We would do gun turn-in days to get the, the guns off the streets and take them out of the hands of those that have no control over their own will. Indeed, we would move to make sure that we tried to make our community safer. That is not what's happening now. When incidents like these occur, people go out and buy more guns. I once had the experience of going to California. While I was there, because I'm from the East Coast, I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and start watching the news. And if there's anybody from California, you can give me an, an amen to this. For some reason, on the news, every time, the story has a shot from a video camera and a helicopter. And in this particular case, there was a car jacked in one part of town that was that actually at gunpoint. 
took the lady out of the car, got in, started driving, the police caught on, and started chasing him across the city. We could see all this from a video camera in the helicopter. The guy lost control of the car and ran into a tree. The, guy, they did, the police came, pulled him out of the car, took him to the hospital, and then into the police station for interrogation. The very next day, I ended up speaking to the chief of police, a brand new chief of police at that time. And I said, sir, look, I woke up and I saw this car chase. I said, what became of the carjacker? He said, well, it's funny you'd ask that question. We asked the carjacker, among other questions, where did you get the gun that you used to steal the car that night? He said, I got it out of the car that I stole the night before. Wow. In essence, what he learned is that carjackers are car thieves first. They steal them whether you're in it or whether you're not, and so people were stupid enough to start buying guns to keep in their glove compartments. And the same car thieves were stealing those cars and using those guns to do the horrific things that they were doing. So brothers and sisters, we're glad you're here because clearly there's very little good common sense behind me. Yeah. <laughs> We need some good adult supervision That's on right. Capitol Hill. Right. They're making decisions because it makes profit. We saw what happened in poor communities where they dump the Saturday night specials and the cheap guns and then they catch it all on video and show it on the news. We've seen that. And then we've seen the gun dealers hold big sales to sell the expensive guns as quickly and as often as possible. In essence, what we're seeing is a real shenanigans being played out. A shenanigans in which I lose, you lose, our parents, our children, our communities all lose. But the NRA, the gun manufacturers, the gun distributors, and the gun dealers make out like fat cats. Right, yeah, that's right. It's time for a change in America. I want to thank those leaders that had the courage to go against the NRA. I want to thank my friend Nancy Pelosi. I want to thank my friend Jim Clyburn. I want to thank, thank the entire CBC, the CHC, the Asian Pacific Caucus, and you all just heard from my friend Keith Ellison from the, the, the Progressive Caucus. We want to thank them for having the power and utilizing their courage to move America in the direction that we must go. The next step must be civilization. Civilization where we're moving away from the high noon era of everyone going out on the streets and whoever can slap leather the fastest, <laughs> stick the gun out the furthest, pull the trigger as often and see that lead fly will be the ones that win. But we all lose when we allow that to happen. So let's make that change. Yeah. 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 So I'm just going to, going to say again, thank you. Thank you for bringing your families out. Thank you for bringing your children out. They need to see what this is all about. It's about our communities. It's about our parents as they move through their sunset years in life, being able to be comfortable and not threatened. It's about my children. I have three sons. I have a 21-year-old, a 17-year-old, and a 12-year-old. My son was 17 at the time you lost yours. We've sat and we've seen what happens when the wrong people get guns into their hands, and we have to make it stop. We have to make it stop because they should be able to have a civil right to be free of the threats and the tyranny of those who only make up their own minds to go out and buy a gun and use it. We have to be able to deal with the threats. The threats of those that know that if they're able to continue to exploit those who are dying because of gun violence, they can make even more money and profit off of it. We've got to make sure we take on those who would actually end up banking as we've seen. And let me just lay one last name and I'm out of here. I will never forget debating Wayne LaPierre. Oh. I see you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and we saw what happened when he was asked about Sandy Hook, didn't we? The NRA waited over a month before it said a word. 
And then when it came out, it blamed everybody, didn't it? Yeah. They said, we blame this on all those violent movies you watch. They said, we blame this on all those violent video games your children play. They said, we blame this on all that violent music that you're listening to. And let me just say this. As I sat there and listened to everybody to blame, and then they came out and they had the audacity to say that the only way to deal with a bad man with a gun is to have a good man with a gun. But I'll leave you with this. All the gun violence that takes place on our streets, every single gun that's picked up was bought legally by somebody. Whether they left it in their closet and the robber robbed the house and took it with them, or whether they lost their temper because the neighbor's dog left something on their lawn they didn't like. In essence, we recognize what's happening with those guns, and now it's time for it to stop. And it will only stop as we move towards this election. And I'll say this in my most nonpartisan way. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who to vote for or who to vote against. But I will say that you should turn out and vote in record numbers and vote for those who represent your values. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Nardine! 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 This was what my daughter looked like before March 30th, 2010. This is what my daughter looked like after being shot in the head with an AK-47 in her head at close range. Also in the shoulder. She was one of nine people shot here, seven miles from here. It was the worst mass shooting that DC's history had seen at that time in about 20 years prior to and up until the um, Navy Yard shooting. These types of shootings, these types of weapons. My father fought in Vietnam, multiple, multiple um, wars, being in the United States Army. And he used AK-47s and these types of weapons. And he survived. My father died before we went to trial because his heart couldn't take the fact that his only grandchild, my only child, was slaughtered with a military-style weapon that was made for the military to protect our nation not for us as civilians to be using it to supposedly using it to exercise our second amendment rights. This is not your second amendment right. This is an innocent 16 year old child. Just like the innocent lives that are gone down every single day all over the United States of America. I thought I lived in the United States of America. I was not aware that I lived in a war zone. We're all sitting targets. We could be hit now because this is what they go for. They get the guns that spit out the uh, large amounts of bullets in a very short amount of time. When I sat in that trial and I looked at that gun and the bullets were this size, about the length of my finger, it just, it hurt me all over again to know that this is what is on our streets. We can do better. We have to do better. And now we is the time. Yes. suggest that all D.C. residents, Maryland residents, and Virginia residents, for the time being, come down here. Yes. 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 Come yes. down to the hill. It's time to shut D.C. down. more children. My future generations have been stolen from me because this was the only child that I had on her way to Japan to do an ambassador program and then to college at 16. No drugs, no gangs, no alcohol. We have to do better. We need to do better. And now is the time for us to do it. So everybody in the DMV, come down to the Capitol. If you're in New York, anywhere in the United States, please come and join us. Thank you.
There are moms walking around in Moms Demand Action t-shirts. We're signing up volunteers. If you want to get more involved, please take a moment to join in. I can't read without my glasses on and I look stupid. Um, so in the meantime, but more, more members are coming out to join us. So please welcome Jose Serrano from the Bronx. You know that all you have to say is from the Bronx, and you don't have to say New York. Because if you're a Boston Red Sox fan, you're not going to like it. Uh, that's okay. I live down the street from Yankee Stadium. I represent what is known as the South Bronx. We wanted to come by and say thank you to you. You don't know how Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Look, we did, without planning, what we had to do. Because when you have in your party, when you have in your neighborhood, when you have in your House of Representatives John Lewis, you don't need to be prompted. To give you a quick recap of what happened is that since 10 o'clock this morning, members of Congress from the Democratic side, unfortunately no one from the other side joined us, have been sitting down and simply saying, don't take up any other legislation until you take up the legislation that says if you can't fly, you can't buy. <laughs> and we want to be clear on this because some people need, we need to be strong by being clear. We're not saying to a person who's got a hunting rifle, we want to take it away from you. We're not saying to a businessman who needs to protect his business, we're taking that away from you. We're not saying to the police, we're taking it away from you. What we're saying is, if you're on a list where you're suspected of being a terrorist, if you're on a list because you can't fly on a plane because you're suspected of being a problem for this country, why in heck are you allowed to buy a gun? And they are defending them. They, they won't move to say this is true. And we keep trying to, to be reasonable with them and talk to them. It can't. It can't happen. And, and it's all about the NRA and this fetish, this sickness that says that somehow if they give in a little bit and come to a to a conclusion that it's good for America to do this, that somehow we're going to take everything from them. I'm the first one, I'm your classic, you know, liberal from New York who will not allow people's rights to be taken away. Yes. So I'm not going to do that to them either. But I'm not going to allow them to allow people who should not be anywhere near a gun. If it was up to me, it wouldn't be not just selling to them, they wouldn't even be allowed to go near a store that sells guns. That's what we have. When we have Orlando, they don't get it. San Diego, they don't get it. The, the school in, in Connecticut, they don't get it. And how long is this gonna take? What you saw today in there, what I saw today, was incredible. It was every member of Congress getting up to tell their story, to tell, to say basically, enough is enough. In fact, one of them, me, even said it in two languages, just in case. Now, now for the younger generation, and for the older generation too, I have to tell you a little story, because something happened in there today, also the historic, and it shows there's a changing world, and you have power. Someone started streaming through Periscope. Yeah. Yes. No outfit, no outfit had to stream because they turned off the microphones. They wouldn't let us use the microphones. They turned off the, uh, the television the cameras, right? And so we did it through Periscope and NBC, CBS, everybody borrowed it from two members of Congress yeah. using Periscope. So thank you to the young people. Yeah. Yeah. It's live with Periscope. One, one last point. One last point. The founding parents, notice I didn't say fathers, the founding parents didn't have TV cameras. But everybody has seen what they did. They didn't have microphones. But the whole world has heard what they've done for all these years. I don't care that they cut our phone, our, our microphones off and our TV cameras off. We are being heard. And the fact that you showed up gives us strength. The fact that you showed up uninvited, but uninvited doesn't mean we don't want you. <laughs> That's not a crash party. The fact, the fact that the gallery is full of people with standing ovations 
When was the last time you heard of public giving a politician a snake? <laughs> <laughs> this is historic, bigger than Periscope. <laughs> and so we want to thank you because you give us the strength to continue tomorrow. Uh, for me, this is very important. Try to understand this because sometimes I get confused about it. I was supposed to be on the floor about 11 o'clock managing for the Democrats a, a bill um, appropriations called financial services, which oversees the District of Columbia, IRS, and so on. We don't know when that bill is coming up. We don't know when any bill is coming up. And what we're saying is the following. What can we possibly do in any other bill more important than we could do in the no buy? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I leave you with this thought. In Spanish, we have a saying, Dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres. Tell me who you walk with and I'll tell you who you are. Mm. We walk with you, you walk with us, we're one, we're going to win this fight. Thank you. tonight, but we're here because of the 91 Americans who are killed with a gun every day in this country. 91 Americans. This has to stop. It has to change. I want to introduce you to a leader of this fight in the House, Senator Thompson, the leader of the Gun Violence Prevention Task Force. <laughs> Uh, Jose said that they shut off our microphone, but we were still heard. He's absolutely correct. Reminds me when I was a little kid in my hometown, little small town in the Napa Valley in California. We had a little little movie theater, about 3,000 people in my hometown. And they changed movies about every two or three nights. And they'd always get a handful of people to come see those movies. One afternoon, they build a new movie that the local Catholic Church found offensive. This is back in the early 60s. Shirley MacLaine was the star, so you know it wasn't terribly racy. <laughs> and the Catholic Church sent out flyers protesting this. They leafleted cars. They put on a huge, huge protest trying to shut down the theater viewing of, of, this, of this movie. Well, that movie stayed in the Roxy Theater in St. Helena for about two and a half weeks. And every night they had a line around the block <laughs> trying to get in. That's what happened today. They tried to tell the American people they couldn't hear what it is that we're supporting and what we're working for. <laughs> we're not asking for a lot. We're asking to stop the moments of silence. It's been three and a half years since I've been the chair of the Gun Violence Prevention Task Force. Happened right after the tragedy at Sandy Hook. Three and a half years. 1,158 mass shootings since Sandy Hook. 30 people a day murdered by someone using a gun. 30 moments of silence. And the most important number that you need to remember is the number of legislative uh, actions that we've taken on the floor in regard to gun violence. Zero. That number is zero. zero. That number is unacceptable. Shame. And the reason that we assembled, we Democrats assembled on the floor tonight, <coughs> was to say no more silence. We need to take action. We need to pass common sense reasonable gun safety legislation to help protect the people of our great country. That's right. We're not, asking, we're not asking for a lot. We're asking for a vote on the no fly, no buy, which says if you're on the terrorist watch list, you shouldn't be able to buy a gun or buy explosives. Right now, if you're on the terrorist watch list, you can legally buy a gun and you can legally buy explosives. That makes absolutely no sense. The other thing, 
we want is a vote on our bill, on my bill, bipartisan bill, 186 co-authors in the House, Democrats and Republicans, a bill that says if you buy a gun through a commercial sale, any place in the United States, you have to have a background check. Yeah. Yeah. want to deny anyone their Second Amendment rights. We don't want to do away with guns. We don't want to stop people who should be able to legally buy guns from buying guns. But we, what we want to make sure is that criminals, the dangerously mentally ill, domestic abusers, or terrorists don't get their hands on guns. Now, you can't stop it all. You can't stop it all. But background checks is our first line of defense. That's why you elected us, to make sure we do everything we possibly can to help make sure our communities are safe, make sure that when you drop your kids off at school, you're reasonably sure that they're going to be safe, make sure if you go into a church to pray, you're reasonably sure you're going to be safe, make sure if you go to a nightclub at night or a movie theater at night, you're reasonably assured of your safety. This isn't anything earth shattering. This is common sense yes. and yes. responsible gun owners are with us on this. Yes. It's great that you're here. It's very, very helpful. But I've got some homework to assign you. It's not over tonight. No. We gotta work. You have to continue. <laughs> You have to continue to deliver this message. You need to take it home with you. You need to take it to your community. You need to talk it up. You need to be the, the motivating force to make sure that we get these votes. The Republican leadership in the Congress needs to hear from people across the country. We need a vote on these reasonable, responsible measures. Thank you very much for being here. Woo! on the floor with my colleagues Woo! and continue yes. to maintain that floor. Woo! Okay, I've been asked to lead a cheer, so I'm going to do my best. What we're going to cheer is no more silence and gun violence. So I want this side, where I'm pointing, to do no more silence, this side to do end gun violence. Can we do that? Oh, yeah. yeah. No more silence and gun violence. No more silence and gun violence. My phone's ringing, but I'll get back to them. I'm going to talk to you. Absolutely, Congressman. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello. I can't tell you what your presence is doing for us inside. just so happy that we have the support of the American people displayed with your presence here tonight. Yeah. We thank you so much. We really can't do what needs to be done by ourselves. We need you all. We need your pushing from the outside. 
We need your agitation. We need your civil disobedience. Yes. 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 It's not easy to step out of your comfort zone. I mean, we all had a day planned for us this morning. We thought things would uh, proceed as normal. You know, we would come in, we would uh, go to committee work, we'd have some appointments, we'd go to the floor and vote, we'd go home. It would be a day like every other day, voting on bullshit. <laughs> But today something strange happened. Uh -huh. Some individuals decided that they were mad as hell and weren't going to take it anymore. At first, at first it was only two or three. Then it got to about ten. And then we looked around and it was 25. And after that it was 75. And I believe that just about every member of the Democratic Caucus has joined us on the floor. Yeah. You know, folks like to talk about how staid and conservative the Senate is. They walked all the way from that side of the building on the floor. <laughs> and they joined us today. And I can't tell you how good it felt to finally be doing something, something that was important, something that needed to be done, even though we're not voting. The message that we're sending is, hey, we ain't leaving until we get a vote. Yeah. Yeah. So the members have resolved to continue our work on through the evening yes. and into the night. Yeah. Yeah. know what's going to happen because we keep hearing rumors that uh, the speaker is going to send in a goon squad to close the doors, shut the lights off. Yeah. So far that hasn't happened. And I really in my heart I, I don't think it will. That's right. No, that's right. Because you know the speaker is right up there. He doesn't have an apartment. He sleeps in his office. <laughs> so he could use a little company tonight. <laughs> so, so I think that uh, we're going to stay as long as it takes to get a deal done that will allow us to vote on some common sense gun reform legislation. Yeah. Woo! gets his nose or her nose into the tent, it ain't no stopping. <laughs> so we just want to, we want to, we want to make this happen. This is a very significant moment. And you all, by your presence, are participating in it. I hope that you stay as long as we can stay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Protecting the young people because we've all lived a number of days, but we got young people who deserve to live a long life too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the, more guns, the more assault weapons we allow to proliferate in our society, the less safe it is for them to be able to grow up. And so we owe it to them. So just a little bit of time out of our day to day, a little bit of uh, being outside of our comfort zone is going to do so much 
to help our young people is so important. And so thank you for all that you do. And uh, I'm sure that others will be coming down to you let so. you know how thank much you do. Pretty far away from here. Thank you all for being here. This is a spontaneous demonstration of what the American people want that the leadership of this house is refusing to deliver. What are they so afraid of? Are they afraid that we will actually vote? I mean, seriously, don't we have a representative democracy? Yes or no? Yeah. But every day, day in, day out, they're offering us fake bills. Yeah. Uh, we're spending a lot of time here voting on things that are never going to happen, that are just politically motivated. This is something the Amer American people, by a large majority, want. Now, what is so dangerous that the Democrats are proposing that Paul Ryan has to block it? Uh, let's see, the first thing is universal background checks. That means no more loopholes where you can drive truckloads of guns around the federal laws and sell guns to people who are prohibited under current law from buying guns. Is that dangerous to America? No. No. In the laws of the United States of America and things that people of America want. And then number two, oh, wow. We're going to say that people are on the watch list who are under investigation for terrorism against the United States of America should be allowed to go into any gun store they want and buy a gun. Now, wow, I can understand why he doesn't want us to vote on that because I think a hell of a lot of the members of his caucus are going to say, I'm not voting against that. I'm not going to vote to say terrorists can go into gun stores and buy guns. So you're here tonight to help us restore representative democracy to this country. That is the will of the people, for the people, by the people, not the special interests of this country. So thank you for being here. people who've been here since, uh, been here, the longest person has been here since uh, almost 10 hours. And uh, we're prepared uh, to stay uh, all night. Here's what I'm... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll be brief because uh, uh, Congressman Kennedy and Congressman Clay uh, are, are right behind me. And, and uh, I, I just want to say thank you. Uh, and, and I want you to understand we're not asking for anything difficult. Uh, no. mm -hmm. One of the problems we have in, 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 in the country now is that American people are working and trying to make it all day. And so when somebody comes to them and says, uh, this particular candidate or this particular party is trying to take your gun, they believe it. They just believe it. Or as I heard one of the presidential candidates say two days ago, <laughs> that, uh, that his opponent was going to uh, change the Second Amendment. <laughs> now, if you if you if you are a third grader, <laughs> you know that there's no such thing as changing, changing. the Second Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. But <laughs> I mean, you hear that? I'm serious. You'll hear you'll hear people on television saying that, and there are millions of people who buy it that they're gonna they're gonna do something to the Second Amendment. Uh, you know, and, and have no idea, uh, you know, that the, the process, even if somebody wanted to try to do it. Uh, look, um, we're, we're, we're not going to leave this up because we've been, we've been energized by, by you. Not long ago, uh, out here on this campus, I was walking with a lot of my friends and people were walking behind us shouting, we want our country back. We want our country back. Well, in my in my real life, I'm a, an ordained United Methodist pastor, so yes. I was saying to myself, okay, 
uh, so uh, <laughs> do not get angry. Uh, do not allow them to do this. And I, 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 I kept hearing it. We want our country back. And they were yelling louder and louder. And I, I, I the Lord was helping me. Um, I, I did turn around. I, I kind of took a glance. And then they kept shouting. And then Satan walked over, put his arm around my neck, and said, Cleaver, you going to let them get away with this? So they said it one more time. We want our country back. And I turned around and I said, well, you can't have it. And what I meant, we're not going back. We're not going back. We're not going back. We're not going back there. And the reason we're not going back is that was not a good time. Kennedy, I'm from Massachusetts. Thank you guys so much. I, I heard a go Sox behind me. <laughs> I haven't been in Congress that long. I have been in Congress long enough to know you never want to speak after Emmanuel Cleaver. <laughs> and I got that straw. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to echo Mr. Cleaver's words tonight and just say thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate it. It's been a long day on the floor. It's been a long time listening to our colleagues recite statistic after statistic, story after story, heartbreak after heartbreak, all to try to get your voices, our voices heard in a people's house. And the point that I think you all drive home tonight is those statistics that we see on paper. Each one represents a person, yeah. a family, hopes and dreams and aspirations. Our fathers and sons, mothers and daughters who didn't get to fill out that future. When at its heart, I truly believe that politics is supposed to be about people. It's about channeling the collective energy and emotions of our people into policy that will guide our country. Tonight, you by being here, show all of us in the chamber behind me what politics is supposed to be all about. Yes! Woo! Thank you enough for being here, for making the commitment to hold your elected officials accountable, yes. to make your voices yes. heard, and to ensure that we will not leave until our house, the people's house, yes. gives you an explanation as to where we stand on these issues. Thank you for what you do. District in New York, which is part of Long Island. Woo! New York. Uh, I have been here for 18 months, and I can tell you that this is the proudest day I have ever spent as a member of Congress. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. I was asked earlier, about two hours ago, if what we were doing here wasn't just a bunch of political theater. And I said to the person who asked me that question, do you know what political theater is? <laughs> political theater is going onto the floor as we do almost every day. And at some point when we are on the floor voting, we are called to do a moment of silence yeah. yep. mm -hmm. in memory of more people mm -hmm. who have died in mass shootings 
somewhere in this country. That is political theater. And you're not going to bring a bill on the floor for a vote that can stop it once yeah. and for all. Yeah. 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 So all of you so much. We are here. We're going to be here all night. We're yes. going to be here however long it takes because you, the American people, are demanding it. And we are so grateful that you are here. This is a very proud day for us Democrats here in the yes. House. Yes. 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 And I've held way too many hands of mothers and fathers and loved ones who have lost family members by this epidemic. And that's what it is. And we're going to stop it here, and hopefully it's going to start tonight. Thank you all very much. Let me thank all of you for being here today. I am Lacey Clay. I represent St. Louis, Missouri. And you know, today, today was an amazing day for my colleagues and I. Uh, and I, I look around at the faces in this crowd. You know, I, I come from a large family in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I have 500 immediate family members. Oh. <laughs> you can bet we have been impacted by senseless mm -hmm. uh, violence at the barrel of a gun. And so uh, today meant a lot to me. I also represent Ferguson, Missouri, yeah. where yes. we have experienced yes. a lot of senseless mm -hmm. gun violence. And I told the story today about a nine-year-old Jamelin Bryant, straight-A student in her mother's bed doing her homework last August. She was gunned down with an AR-15 from outside her house. <clears throat> she lost her life. If we had had an assault weapons ban in place, Maybe we could have saved her. Yeah. Maybe we could have saved her. But if we could have saved one life, yes. 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 it would have made a difference in this country. Yes. So let me, uh, let me thank each and every one of you for your support this evening, for being here, having our back. Um, the House leadership under Speaker Ryan and Leader McCarthy are tone deaf. Yes. 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 They don't hear us. But I think after today, the they're going to ha. get some of that hearing back. Yeah. They are tone deaf to the needs of the American people, the wishes and desire to keep us safe to keep us safe. Let me leave you with this. Um, you've got signs that say, disarm hate. I couldn't agree with you more. And as Dr. King told us, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only the light can do that. Yes. Hate, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Love you all. Everybody. I'm Elliot Engel. I'm the ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. I'm from Bronx, New York. And I, I want to tell you it's so great looking out and seeing so many young people here. You are our future and you will change this country in a positive way. I was very proud and am proud to participate in the, in the sit-in on the House floor. You know, if you look at statistics, so many more people have been killed by gun violence than by terrorism. Yes. Yes. We have a war yes. on terror, and we should, but there's no war on gun violence. Right. Yes. That is the war. Yes. I'm 
proud to tell you that the NRA rated me and sent me a report card and gave me an F. Yeah! You know, when you all went to school, and I went to school, we all learned how a bill becomes a law. You remember those charts? And you vote for it, and it comes up very nicely in committees, and if you get a majority, it's wonderful, and it goes to the floor, and if a majority agree, it's terrific. Throw it all away. That ain't the way the House works. <laughs> the Republicans, as you know, are preventing us from having a vote. We're not saying that the vote should be our way. We're saying give representatives a chance to vote. We are yeah. 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 If we win the vote, then we'll have gun control in this country. If we lose the vote, we won't. But they'll be on record as having prevented yep. it. Yeah. job on masquerading their votes. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, if you're for saving lives, then you're for sensible gun control. Right. Yeah. No yeah. one is assailing the, the Second Amendment. We are simply saying that when the Second Amendment was there, it didn't conceive the people who wrote it of semi-automatic rifles. That's right. That's right. It didn't conceive that some lunatic would come into a club and shoot dead 49 people in a matter of seconds. It didn't, it didn't, they didn't, couldn't imagine the destruction that would have happened. These are not hunting weapons. These are weapons of war. Yes, and individual yes. people, in my opinion, should not be allowed to have weapons of war. So I just want to thank you. I was coming back and I was uh, going upstairs and I heard the crowd. It's really, really wonderful. <laughs> Look, we have an election in this country coming on. Yes, we do. And nobody is perfect. But I got to tell you, for this issue, we've got to look very carefully and make sure that everybody votes. Mm -hmm. It's really, really important. The future of our country depends on it. Yeah. In my perch on the Foreign Affairs Committee, I deal with leaders from all over the world. And they cannot understand why America preaches to them, yes. but when it comes to gun violence, we are unfortunately right. number one on the list in the world. Yes. That shouldn't right. happen. Yeah. So, let me conclude by saying again, thank you, thanks to all of you. It really makes us feel thank good you. that we have you behind us. It really makes us feel good. of this country. Many years ago, when I was your age, we had protests like this against oh. the Vietnam War. Yeah. Yeah. This brings me back 30 years and makes me feel 30 years younger. Yeah. Yeah. because there is a lot of violence and a lot of gun violence in Baltimore. Too many people have died over these last few years. They feel this epidemic of gun violence in the city of Baltimore as it is felt across the country. I want to report to you that Speaker Ryan, as you probably know by now, cut off the cameras and he cut off the I'm at I'm at one percent. Um, I'm at one percent. I gotta go. Uh, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Um, I'll probably be, I gotta go to work tomorrow. I'll probably be back here at four tomorrow. So um, uh, so I'll come back. I doubt there'll be a vote by then, right? So uh, I'll probably be here tomorrow and uh, doing this some more. So thanks everybody for coming out.
Uh, or maybe there's another one periscoping here. There's a lot. Yeah, maybe 200 people here. So. Have a good night. Peace.